This is part two of the end of my season. If you haven't watched part one, there'll be a link up there. It's not essential that you watch part one, but it gives you an idea of what happened up until the accident. In part two, in this one, we're going to talk about basically what followed. And a warning to anybody who might be a bit squeamish, there are some x-rays and some other stuff that we will talk about. It's not terrible, but some people might be, you know, so uh, just be warned. Bienvenue and welcome to... Great stuff wants to talk to me. This can't be right. I am in agony. <laughs> Every step that I take now. Where we left part one, I was basically sitting in a pile of snow, in shock, realising that my right leg, or more importantly, my right knee, wasn't right. And two things that came to my mind was blood wagon or ski down to the centre of Courchevel. Whether it was my pride or anything like that, I really didn't want to uh, get a get a blood wagon. But basically the run that took me back down to the resort was a green run and a run that maybe you normally I would take it would take me 30 seconds to ski down uh, after I managed to get my right leg back into a ski binding it must have taken about 10 minutes however much I would have liked to have skied on my left leg which was my good leg uh, I was skiing in the wrong direction, if you like. We basically, did, we stuck a really, really safe snowplow. We stopped regularly. I did not want to fall over again with my bad leg. Made it to the medical centre. Actually, no, I should give my first shout out. When I got down to resort, I was trying to walk to the medical centre. And one of the agents security voir public... Um, I, I I almost call them the RSVPs, but they're the uh, AS uh, VPs. But one of them saw me like walking really slowly and assisted me. And I can't remember her name, but she was an absolute godsend. Made it to the medical center. They went and x-rayed my, my knee, which was had already puffed up the size of, I'm going to say, like a grapefruit. The prognosis from that one was that... I hadn't actually broken, uh, hadn't torn any ligaments, but what had happened was one of my ligaments had actually pulled its way off the bone, off the top of the, off the tibia. And so basically there was a ligament with a piece of bone attached to it, floating around in my knee. I know, not, not, not good at all. He told me to go down to Arborville again. Uh, when I say again, I should remind you last year, I broke my ankle. And of course, went down to Arborville where I had surgery on it. They did a CAT scan on it. Basically, told me what I already knew. You've you've injured your leg. Uh, I can't remember exactly the, what they told me, but basically, I presume that they told me what the guy up here told me. I went upstairs to the surgical ward uh, where I waited for surgery. Well, today's the day we go under the knife for the second time. Just as a little test, see if you can tell which one of these legs is got a problem with it, or rather the knee. Yeah. However great Alberville Hospital is, it'll be great to get home. A surgeon comes into my room and t tells me, unfortunately, that there are seven seven surgeries ahead of me. It is actually the same surgeon who did my ankle. We had a little bit of a laugh about that. Maybe I would have surgery that day, but really, uh, really wouldn't. We've been here for two days. Finally, I'm heading into surgery today, which is good. Excuse the slur. My mouth is super dry. No liquids before going under the knife <laughs> and the worst thing is an absolute beautiful day out there anyway we shall see we go and get prepped for surgery they go in there i have an epidural again they basically go to work 
on it. The less I want to know about this, the better. So literally, I asked for music. Even with the epidural, I was able to feel certain things. Listening to music, you can still hear like them using the screw gun, I'm going to say. I, I could fa feel, I was going to say, I could feel the first incision, uh, which was, again, something that I don't really want to feel uh, think about. Uh, and about five minutes from the end, I could start to wiggle my left foot. After telling the, the anaesthetist, he was like, no, no, we've, we've finished. We're literally just like sewing you up. We're, you know, going to be fine. So... Today, just found out seven screws, and one plate in my leg, which, uh, yeah, <laughs> interesting. But we are on the road to recovery. Just had the IV taken out. Hopefully, very soon, the, the drain will come out of the wound. And I will be heading back up the mountain for Monday. But who can tell? I'm sure we will find out later. Oh well. Ciao. You know, it, what, what might be sounding like any sort of bitching or whining or anything like that, the staff, the nurses and everybody in Arborville were absolutely amazing. I cannot say a bad word about them. I'm only one patient in there, but literally they are, were the nicest and most you know, amazing staff that I that I have come across. Pain management and just 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 their general professionalism, second to none. The following Monday, so three days after the operation, I was heading back home. Beginning of March, two months before the end of the season, really wasn't what I was hoping for. Now it's now it's a very long process of recovery. Uh, I'm filming this like two weeks after the operation. You know, everything has gone really well. I've had the stitches taken out. As anything which would have seven screws in there, there is pain. And of course, I haven't been able to bend my leg. My leg has been in a brace, moving around on crutches, getting outside. Well, not so much getting outside because, of course, because of the coronavirus and things like that. Uh, hence why I'm wearing the most <laughs> unsuitable T-shirt that I designed years ago. We shall see. I've got to go and see the doctor in about a week's time where they're going to re-x-ray it and, and just check whether everything is going all right. And then hopefully he will tell me whether I can start bending my leg and doing all the other things that I want. It's uh, not ideal. We, 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 we shall see. You know, I'm, you know, you, you see me smiling and like laughing there. Uh, you know, I'm in good spirits. Uh, I'm just bored. The resort is just eerily quiet. There's only so many films you can watch. There's only so many, you know, uh, phones you can repair. So yes, that is, that is, that is part two of my story. Worst ski accident that I've had. Yeah, we shall see uh, what my recovery, my physios have told me, you know, I've got to be flexing and doing all these other things. Yeah, there you go. As always, comments down below, subscribe, like, share, all this other good stuff. And you know what? I, of course, hope to see you in the next video. I don't know whether you want me to talk about the, like, the, the quarantine in a ski resort. I will see you all in the next video. Ciao.